if you all looked at me, you couldn't tell that I was ever homeless. But I was. I aged out of foster care. Now here, I get off a school bus with a basketball uniform on, go to the house, happy because we won the game, and here's two trash bags full of clothes. Where am I supposed to go at 7.30 at night? So many of our kids will just walk up to our house and they'll knock on the door and we'll open it up and um, we greet them. We want to make sure that you're okay, that you've eaten, that you just kind of uh, decompress from, from the stress and struggles that you've had. So I came here and I just walked in and I mean, I just remember like meeting like Kat and she was just like an angel. Like, mm -hmm. it was just like, <laughs> like light, like a halo on my wings when she opened the door for me. These youth are coming directly off the street. So we provide them with their beds, their bedding, they have their closets, and then they come in and the longer they're here, they make it theirs and they make it unique to them. We'll get items donated like TVs for them to have in their rooms. Sometimes they'll put up items on the walls. This one says, my next bean is my next grade. These kids are sleeping in cars. They're sleeping in numerous locations. They may not be as visible, but the numbers are big and they're still there. I never really slept when I was on the streets. Um, and it gets cold, like really cold at night. Like you can't even sleep because it's so cold. I didn't know what to do. I was literally crying. Like I didn't know where to go, like what to do, like possibly like harm you, like come kill you while you're asleep, you know? I, I think there's a different type of homelessness doing homelessness during the day. Homelessness mm -hmm. at night. And at night. At night it goes up a whole life. other stress level. Yeah. It's been a lot harder to attach to some youth, especially because, you know, coming from different backgrounds, some youth aren't particularly comfortable with males, I've noticed, especially in LAYN, since a lot of, you know, the previous abuse really falls back on, you know, a male figure, whether it's father, uncle, stepfather. Many of the youth that also enter our location um, enter our facility because they have been kicked out of their families due to their sexual orientation. Um, we have a high percentage of our youth that are LGBT and our transgender youth as well. What this organization does is they've literally taken every, like, every insecurity that one has, like when going through homelessness, like, they just take it away and, like, they provide for you. For, from everything, like, tampons, like, LAYN, got you. Like, <laughs> having someone to talk to you. You go into this office, it does not matter what they have going on. You're gonna get like four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, yeah. like, you can be whoever you wanna be here and like everyone's just so accepting and like it's just such a place to thrive. Like someone can get the courage to like transition. Now I thought to myself, when I was younger, who knew I would grow up to be transgender? That's not something that I knew. That's not something that I wanted to be when I was younger. I didn't say, hey, I want to grow up and be transgender. Like, you didn't, we didn't wake up and be like, oh, hey, I'm going to be homeless today. Like, this is fun. Let's do that. Ellen Wayne's proud to be part of that story, but the story is really about them and what they've done to transform their lives. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.